is Chris Dowson. Chris works as a commercial <coughs> photographer, director, retoucher, editor, compositor, and is on his way to becoming a feature film director and writer. So please welcome Chris. off the night with just one single story, like an actual contained single story. Um, it's just a story about uh, a couple of friends. Go ahead. So I'll set the stage. This it was summer in 2012, and my good friend Kyle had been diagnosed with ALS, which is Lou Gehrig's disease, for about eight, mo eight months by this point. Kyle would do all sorts of crazy crap with all sorts of people, but at this time, this particular weekend, we were in Invermere, British Columbia, and it was myself, him, and a couple other people. Kyle, at this point in time, had completely lost the use of his hands, and was almost completely lost the use of his arms, and was losing the use of his shoulders. <coughs> so, ALS works like this, specifically. It's a fatal neurodegenerative disease, that essentially attacks the relationship between your brain and your nervous system. So it stops the communication between your uh, brain and the muscle groups, and piece by piece, an ALS um, uh, person with ALS has less and less of their body every single day. So each part would cramp up, and does cramp up, randomly, um, intermittently throughout the day. So like if it was your hand going, it would cramp up like that, and then it would release. And then it would cramp up, and then it would release. And this happens persistently, tenaciously, painfully, brutally, all day, every day, until that particular part of the body becomes completely atrophied and it dies. So fortunately, this hadn't happened in Kyle's legs at this time. So he figured, because his legs were still good to go, that we would go full out, and we would just have as much fun as possible. And although I automatically agreed to that, and I agreed to do exactly that, goof around, go full out, uh, I was also getting used to doing quite a bit more for him because I was becoming more of a caregiver for him. So I had these two competing inner dialogues that essentially sounded like this. One was goof around and be an idiot and you know have fun with your friend. And the other was kind of like, you're here to, to help him, and you're here to be responsible. So learn to do that. With that get, being said, we plan to rent a couple of sea dues and hit the lake. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when we rented those sea dues, uh, I hadn't thought through the logistics of that act until we actually had them, and we were about to get on. Kyle couldn't have cared less, um, and he just rushed in, and he said him and I would go together. But remember, he couldn't move his hands most of his arms and his shoulders. So <coughs> essentially, Kyle jumped on. Um, I pushed him into the water, and I uh, got on behind him. And I reached around, grabbing the handlebars with his body in between me, and I held his body with my elbows, kind of. Uh, I couldn't help but be really nervous by this point, because I was in the thick of it, and I had started doing something I was unsure about. So it felt really sketchy, honestly. I, I, uh, I kept thinking, what if Kyle won't be able to swim? Because he was an athlete, he could, he could do everything, but what if he couldn't swim? What if we went in the middle of the lake and, and crashed him and he fell off? And Kyle just turned his head, he was in the middle, he turned his head and just said, okay man, hit it, let's, let's do this, let's go. So, of course, I started to go and I pressed the gas you know, slowly and, and it was pretty nerve wracking, honestly, but not only because it felt dangerous, but I was also getting really nervous because I was keeping it all to myself. And I was being very hesitant and I had a motor mind that I was being quiet. I didn't want to actually ruin Kyle's experience. I want him to have fun and to not worry. So as I'm driving under the lake, he essentially just reaches back again and says, you see those waves over there? Hit them head on. And I'm like, okay. So I, I start like pressing the gas, and we start going over the waves, and over the first wave, and then over the second wave, and we are over the waves. And 30 seconds later, he turns and he says, well, that certainly sucks. <laughs> you see that flat section over there? Like, pin it. Let's see how fast we can go, get going. 
So I do, except pin it, but uh, go slightly faster, right? <laughs> so I start to go, I start to go, and we're going at that pace for around uh, two minutes or so, maybe two, three minutes, when Kyle started to scream. He, he, he just said, stop, stop. Like, my legs, my legs are cramping up. Stop. And I, I of course I stopped. I was like, oh my god. And he said, let go of the handlebars. Get your arms away from me. I'm like, stop. So I do, and I go like this. And as fast as he possibly can, he launches himself <laughs> off of the sea dew, head first with his arms at his sides like this, into the water. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> so I didn't know what to make of that. <laughs> Before I can go in after him, he just turns around, comes up out of the water, his head comes up, and he's bobbing there with his light jacket on, and he looks me right in the eyes with just this shit-eating grin on his face. <laughs> and he goes, why don't you just grow a set and hit the gas already? <laughs> he said, it's fine, dude. We came here to have fun. So stop worrying so much, and let's fucking do this. <laughs> so we did. <laughs> I picked him up and got on the sea and, and we had what Kyle would say was a phenomenal time. That changed our relationship at that point, and it, it changed it at that, for that day, and it changed it indefinitely. So Kyle passed away on November 21st of last year, just after, just after over four years of having ALS, and also just after over 33 years of having fun. And he left me with a lot of wisdom, and I learned a lot from this whole experience, but some of that wisdom sticks out more than the rest. And he'd be happy that I learned this particular lesson from this particular memory. That life is just too short. And we should do less worrying and more living.